For a long time, I was thinking about getting a Mishimoto radiator for my first gen, but they're really, really expensive, like $610 plus at the time of this video. And I think that's not, even with the lifetime warranty, I think that's a little steep. I decided to pick this one up instead. It is a 62 millimeter four row core, uh, which I think is superior. You got the more volume, you got more passes. Some people will tell you that, you know, a two, a two row core is going to be better. Um, and there's some arguments to be made for that as well, but uh, my train of thought led me here. This particular one, I, I'd imagine that they're all probably made in the same factory, but I purchased this one from a company on eBay called OZ Cooling Parts. The reason that I bought from them is because they claim to have a lifetime warranty. Whether or not they will actually honor it, I don't know, but uh, rest assured, if there is problems with this radiator, I'll definitely uh, find out and report back. But uh, let me go ahead and get this thing out of the box and we can take a look at it. Having radiators shipped is one of my least favorite things because they usually get absolutely destroyed on the way. And you have to send them back and forth three times before you get one that's even remotely acceptable. But uh, this company did a great job packaging this thing. Like, I don't see hardly any issues at all. There's just a couple little dings and some fins, but I don't care, it's fine. The welds appear to be of uh, pretty good quality. Don't look too bad. I'd imagine that they probably pressure test these if I were to guess. It's got a uh, drain pet cock. This one's uh, brass, which is kind of a pleasant little surprise. The little uh, stanchions in the middle here are uh, eighth inch. Yeah, that is, uh, that is what I would call some increased volume there. Very nice. It's got a threaded nipple on it for the overflow tank. I am pleasantly surprised with the quality of the cap. This isn't even plastic. This is, all of this is metal. I count one, two, three, four. Look at that. Four rows, 62 millimeters. That's a lot of extra surface area. The inlet and outlet are bead rolled. I gotta say, so far I'm pretty impressed with the uh, craftsmanship by our friends in Hong Kong there. I mean, uh, all the all the details are right, man. This is this feels like a quality piece. Let's get this old junk out of here, I guess. The petcock is actually down on the driver's side there, but uh, I make a giant mess every time I use that, so I'm just gonna siphon it instead. Now I'm going to see just how much junk is in this radiator and that'll tell me whether or not I should bother uh, flushing out the coolant system or not. It's nothing too horrendous but there is some scale in there so I think it's worth uh, doing a reverse flush, might as well. Here's the shenanigans I came up with to do this. So I got some double 5 8 barbs here running to the heater core inlet. You can see where I took the valve off right there. It's this port right here. So that is gonna back flush the engine all the way down to the water pump. And then I hacked a hole in the bottom of a uh, old jug of coolant there. And that is gonna act as my funnel. And hopefully most of it should end up in here. But You know, it's actually really convenient flushing out the, uh, the heater core as well because a regular old garden hose cut into a couple lengths works perfectly. Now that I got it flushed out with hose water, I'm going to top off the heater core with distilled water just to make bleeding the system a little easier later. Now I'm going to rob some stuff off the old radiator for the installation of the new one, like these little uh, rubber isolators. 
Is it just me, or does old rubber last way longer than any new rubber that you've encountered? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see if other people have had the same experience. All right, so here's what I had to do to get it to fit. I had to cut this corner so that now it's about as level as that side. So now there's enough room for the tank. I had to bend this a little bit. I did a little bit of uh, peening in this area here. I had to fold this area over. I had to cut the same corner out of this side so that it's level over here. And then I had to cut a chunk out here and I didn't realize that this was such thin metal so I accidentally tore it a little bit as I was going through the spot welds but um, I'm gonna cover up these rough edges with some foam tape so that uh, the tank isn't chafing on uh, all of the steel down here but now I still have to come up with a solution for the core support bushings which sit too tall here's the solution I came up with so getting rid of that it's gonna be a washer a uh, rubber washer that I just made. The bolt is now a M12 175 by 60 millimeter. I cut the bushings about 5 sixteenths of an inch and then a lock washer and a nut. So I took her out for a test drive and it went fairly well. Obviously the real test is going to come when I'm towing some heavier stuff, but so far so good. But can you believe after I go to all the trouble of getting this thing fitted, uh, the hood won't shut. Look at this. I'll probably deal with that tomorrow because I spent entirely too much of my weekend messing around with this thing. This appears to be the spot where it's hanging up a little bit. So, uh, I guess out comes the ball peen. So is all that trouble worth it to install one of these? Well, I think it's going to be. It definitely took uh, a lot of my free time this weekend getting this thing installed and, you know, massaging everything to get it to fit and it's pretty disappointing how much work was required but uh, I guess you get what you paid for um, supposedly this thing does have a lifetime warranty um, even though it's made of Hong Kongium uh, which is actually a Chinese variant anyways I don't know if uh, the fitment on some of the more expensive options is any better but uh, these four core ones they do require some work to get them to fit 
I'm hoping that it's going to be worth it. I think this will be a great addition for towing heavy because not only is this an upgrade for the engine's cooling system, it's also an upgrade for the transmission's cooling system because I'm retaining my uh, stock transmission oil cooler, which is buried under there. And uh, because the, you know, the fluid to fluid heat exchange is really, really efficient. And uh, I still have the little stock baby transmission cooler up in the grill as well. But uh, this should do a better job mitigating heat for both the engine and the transmissions. I think it's all in all, it's gonna be a worthwhile upgrade. I just wish it didn't take uh, that much effort to get it to fit.